Tonight, we have been following a developing story regarding a popular bar in town. Also, those ages 5 to 11 are slowly receiving their vaccines. We have the numbers. And a third open house for SUNY Oswego happened since the pandemic. We'll tell you, we'll tell you why this one is special. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Scott Brubaker. And I'm Hannah Limbo. Undergraduate enrollment across the country was down last fall due to the pandemic. Preliminary data is now showing that the decline is getting even worse, with enrollment falling by another nearly 500,000 undergrad students. Experts are worried that future employers may not be able to find the skilled workers they need. Today, SUNY Oswego held its third open house for the semester, with about 400 prospective students and 1,000 people attending in total. Admissions says that this is the biggest in-person open house this semester, something they say might help with enrollment. It really makes a huge difference, and even with COVID, um, we've been really conscious of mask wearing and discussing and spacing, um, but we're just happy to have people back, and people really seem to be back and seem to be eager to come back and visit. We've been very busy. A lot of admission events are still hap happening virtually, but events like this happen with masking and other COVID safety protocols in place. Also, we go city school district officials are planning a COVID-19 vaccination clinic for young students. This follows federal approvals of a lower dose vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. In partnership with the Oswego Health Department, the district will host the clinic at the Oswego High School cafeteria on November 18th. Superintendent Mathis Calvin says that third uh, says that online registration will be announced in the coming days. And as younger students continue to get their shots, parents and educators gathered at the New York State United Teachers Union parking lot today to protest a possible vaccine mandate for teachers in New York State in New York State schools. Right now, the vaccine is not mandated for educators in the state, but unvaccinated teachers are required to get a weekly COVID test. Organizers say the rally was meant to send a signal and that educators should not be punished for not getting the shot. As protests are ongoing, children COVID-19 cases are ramping up and the concerns of vaccine inequity and the return of measles are becoming a big topic. Britt Conway has the story. Done. All done with his first COVID-19 vaccine. And he's not the only one. The White House estimates nearly a million kids 5 to 11 have gotten their first dose. With about 700,000 pharmacy appointments on the books, 114 children's hospitals and doctor's offices are offering vaccinations too. And there are mobile clinics in some places, along with school clinics. But getting more kids vaccinated is often a battle against hesitancy and sometimes equity. A recent poll shows parents with lower incomes are less likely to get their kids in that 5 to 11 age group vaccinated with concerns about getting time off work or finding a way to get to a vaccination site, along with educational disparities. Experts say more education generally comes with more acceptance of science. COVID-19 vaccines aren't the only vaccine doctors are worried about, though. The CDC says 22 million babies worldwide missed their vaccinations last year during the pandemic, worsening the global threat of measles. All the while, kids' cases of COVID are on the rise again. The American Academy of Pediatrics says this past week, there was a more than 6% increase in cases from the week before. And winter is coming. This is at its heart a winter virus, and I think that as we head into winter, we will likely see a bump in cases. That's the, the most likely scenario. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Despite the rise of cases among children, White House officials say that nearly one million children have now been vaccinated. California state epidemiologist Dr. Erica Pan says that this is a wonderful opportunity to protect young children. Governor Hochul announces that more than 100,000 vaccines have been administered in the last 24 hours. She plans on dramatically increasing access to data and information as she continues the process of rebuilding New Yorkers' trust in the state government. Hochul is, pro 
Hochul is promoting transparency to the public by releasing new data on the Health Data NY website. As gas prices continue to rise, the nationwide average at the highest it has been over seven years. Now the lowest gas prices according to Gas Buddy are reported at $3 in Oklahoma. But Oswego residents here in upstate New York are frustrated. Our reporter Matthew Reifenberg has more. Yes, frustration is what many people here in Oswego feel when it comes to pumping gas now. I am outside Burn Dairy Gas Station where the price of gas is $3.57 per gallon. Many people are unhappy with the high prices per gallon. I spoke with John P. Patel on her thoughts about the high gas prices. Students like us who earn some money and then have to spend it on fuel, it's really hard for us to like kind of maintain. So I understand environmental system and everything, but it, it is bad that it's going too high and I, I'm not liking it. Many people agree that it is good for the environment to have high gas prices, but many people are not happy with it. Reporting in Oswego, Matthew Rivenberg, WTOP 10 News. Thank you so much, Matthew. Now, as the holidays near, that number is expected to rise in travel to becoming the center of focus. Biden announced that he is working with OPEC to continue to aggressively pump oil so as to increase the supply and meet the demand and lower those prices. We've been following this developing story. Last night, as Alley Cat unexpectedly lost their liquor license after they were caught over the weekend selling alcohol to minors. Over 80 underage patrons were caught and 78 appearance tickets have since been given for possessions of a fraudulent ID. Now, other bars in the area are tightening up restrictions in response. We reached out to the Ferris Wheel, another popular bar in Oswego, who says they are now requiring two forms of ID to be shown. Governor Kathy Hochul announces today that New York State landmarks are going to be lit green to mark Veterans Day. These landmarks are going to include the World Trade Center, the Grand Central Terminal, and the State Education Building, among nine others. Hochul also marched with service members in the Veterans Day Parade in Manhattan, and she says today tonight's lighting represents the unwavering support for New York's veterans and their families. Governor Kathy Hochul signs a legislative package in honor of veterans and their families. Hochul adds that by signing it will ensure veterans and other active duty military members with all the benefits and resources they need. New York's veterans stood up for us and we will continue to stand by them, Hochul says. Stay tuned for more Veterans Day content after the weather forecast. And we do have some breaking news tonight. There's a missing 14-year-old white female, Shayna Lackey, height 5'12", 110 pounds, brown eyes, Suspect is a white male wearing a dark mask. She was last seen in Utica. If you have any information, call 315-735-3301 or call the police directly at 911. And coming up later tonight, not only will we show you how Oswego showed support this Veterans Day, but we also have more updates from President Biden himself as well. So stick around for more news right after the break. And speaking of the weather, we are joined by our Storm Team 10 meteorologist, Brittany Sparsino. Brittany, how's the weather? Hi, thanks, Scott. So I hope you enjoyed the abundance of sunshine that we saw today, as well as the warmer temperatures, because that is going to change as we move into this weekend. We're going to be seeing the wind move or start increasing tonight and move into Saturday evening, as well as those rain showers for the weekend. And we're going to see possible snow showers for the early part of next week. That's right, I said snow showers. Coming up, I'll have my full forecast after the break. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million.
Our son Arjun was born with cystic fibrosis. CF is a genetic disease that shortens lives. When the foundation was founded in 1955, children with CF rarely live long enough to attend kindergarten. Today, thanks to the foundation's groundbreaking research, advocacy, and care, some people with CF are attending college, getting married, and starting families. We've made amazing progress, but until a cure is found for all people with CF, we will not stop. Help us add tomorrows. Visit cff.org today. Is there a danger hiding in your home? Unused opioid medicines could harm your family. Find your unused opioid pills, patches, or syrups and learn how to dispose of them safely at fda.gov slash drug disposal. Welcome back from the break. I'm your Storm Team 10 meteorologist, Brittany Sparsino. Today we saw the warmer temperatures outside, which is above average for this time of year. We saw Oswego in the mid to upper 50s as long as across New York State, and we were a little bit cooler in the Adirondacks region. And looking at this map, we do see we do have a wind advisory for the North Country as well as Western New York that is going to last tonight and into tomorrow. And looking at the current wind gusts, we are in a about the mid to upper 20s, and it's only going to increase from here on out throughout the weekend. We are going to be expecting wind gusts up to 35 miles per hour, and that's going to be the same story across New York, and they are going to be seeing a little bit of a higher wind down in the Finger Lakes region. And moving along to recap for what we're going to be seeing tonight, we're going to be seeing those partly cloudy skies with a low of 35 degrees and a wind gust up to 35 miles per hour. And moving into your Friday, we are going to be seeing that morning rain with a high of 58 degrees, which is still above average for this time of year. And the rain is going to be increasing as we move into or into Friday night and into your weekend. So the look at the at the chance of snow, we're going to be seeing it to be increasing as we move into Friday into Saturday night, and it is going to be on a likely side. So if you do have plans, it's not going to be a complete washout, but I do suggest bringing an umbrella and your rain boots as we are going to be expecting to see some down, brief heavy downpours at some times throughout the night. And looking at your Saturday, it is going to be raining and it is going to be pouring. Again, we are seeing those high chance for your rain all throughout your Saturday, and it's going to be the same for your Sunday. And looking ahead at your seven day forecast, we are going to be seeing those warmer temperatures last for your Friday, but it's going to change as we move into this weekend as we're seeing a cold front push through with the rain and it's going to be very windy for your Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And moving to the early part of next week, we are seeing the chance of those snow showers, but it's not going to be anything that's going to stick to the ground. And we're going to be seeing that snow for your Tuesday. And as we move into the later end of the week, we are going to be seeing the temperatures cool down again and be seeing those cloudy conditions. Coming up after the break, more news and sports. You're watching WTOP 10 Nightly News. When you are in space, you can't run down to the store to buy parts. You have to improvise with what you have on your mission. Making is when there is something new that was not in existence at the beginning of the day. Okay. It's an incredible sense of accomplishment when you have made something. That's why I make. Now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. Total, Baldwin faces 32 charges. Saturday, I went to Woodchuck Saloon. Too much temperature change. 13, 10 meter out Two as well. Visions from Tanner Spink. Go to two and one. Two with six and ten on the year. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org.
Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Carson Bruner and it's time to let you know what's up in Oswego. Today is Veterans Day, so I want to take the time to thank those who have served our country and are currently serving our country. Starting with the opening of a new Veterans Lounge on campus. Veterans, active duty military, students, and students can use this safe space to access veteran specific materials relating to campus resources, education benefits, scholarships, VA benefits, community-based veterans organizations, and upcoming campus and community veterans events. If you're interested in visiting this Battle Buddy Center, you can find it at 110 Lee Hall. We spoke to a veteran today from Syracuse who says it's a great investment. Uh, but even more important, it gives them a chance where they can uh, work on their studies and not feel interrupted, you know, uh, a place where they can just relax, you know. Uh, so this is very, very important that SUNY Oswego actually supports something like this. In the city of Oswego, the Oswego City Veterans Council held the annual Veterans Ceremony at Veterans Park. Members of the community gathered to honor all veterans, more specifically our local veterans, to thank them for their service. I had the opportunity to speak to Oswego Mayor Billy Barlow, who attended the event, about the importance of the city's annual veteran ceremony. Memorial Day, we obviously remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for all our country. And then Veterans Day, we actually lower the flags in the park, put them away for safekeeping uh, before winter arrives. And we just try to encourage uh, the Oswego community to thank a veteran and to get out and support some veteran causes. Don't forget to take the time to thank a veteran for their service on this Veterans Day. Now for this week's adoptable pet of the week, Gwendolyn. She is a beautiful kitten who is needy for attention. She loves to be by your side, hence her nickname, Velcro Kitten. This friend for life can be adopted via the Adopt-A-Pet webpage for the Oswego Humane Society. You can email questions to info.oswegohumane.org. That's all I have for this week. Scott, Hannah, back to you. Thank you so much, Carson. The Biden administration announced a number of initiatives aimed at assisting veterans that were exposed to burn pits and many other toxins while serving overseas. During the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, open air pits were frequent in military outposts. Biden announces his support for those veterans. I've gotten in trouble way back when I was a young senator for saying, we only have one truly sacred obligation. We have many obligations, but one truly sacred obligation to properly prepare those and equip those who we send into harm's way and care for them and their families while they're both deployed and when they return home. This is a lifetime sacred commitment. It never expires. And for me and for Jill and for the entire Biden family is personal. Biden believes that his son Bo died from cancer due to the exposure of burn pits while serving in Iraq. Because of the exposure to burn pits, it is unclear if Biden's son died of cancer. Biden cannot prove it, yet his son died of stage four glioblastoma. Today marks the, uh, marks the first Veterans Day since the ban of transgender service mem members by Trump administration was lifted. President Joe Biden was signed the executive order repealing the ban for four days into office, allowing members of the LGBTQ plus community to participate in military service. Frank Kameny, Harvey Milk, and Bree Pham are among many LGBTQ uh, LGBTQ plus service members who paved the way for a more inclusive military service. European leaders are fearing escalation at the Belarus-Poland border. Leaders say the border crisis could spark into violent conflict as the migrant crisis surges. Poland directly accuses mm -hmm. Moscow of helping orchestrate the plot to lure immigrants from the Middle East to EU borders. Defense officials say the EU should focus on providing Poland with logistics and resources while pressing sanctions on Belarus to quell the migrant surge. And coming up in sports, we have Pat Machado. Pat, can you please give us a quick preview? Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Scott. The Bills get a key name back. So soccer players receive honors and an important weekend for hockey ahead. Stay tuned, more sports coming up after the break.
I'm a lot more confident and a lot more sure of my abilities. At Oswego is where I really found myself and became the person I am. You work hard and you play hard. I love the environment of SUNY Oswego. made her college years possible. Opening that education savings account when she was little, spearheading campus tours, and deciphering financial aid. If you can ace planning for college, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Patrick Machado. Here's what's going on in the wide world of sports. The men's soccer season has come to a close, and three Oswego State seniors were named to all SUNYAC conference teams. Keeper Brian Terra earned first team honors with a 1.35 goals against average and four clean sheets. Defensive anchor Caleb Munsky was named the second team. The Laker D allowed 1.28 goals and 12.3 shots per game. And despite an injury early on, Slater Bushin earns third team honors with a .231 shot percentage. Oswego State fell to the final, fell in the final to Cortland. Oswego ha Hockey have their annual teal games this weekend. Both the men and women will be wearing teal to raise awareness and funds for ovarian cancer research, continuing the fight started by Mary Gosick before she passed away from the disease in 2017. The men look to remain unbeaten in SUNYAC play facing Cortland at 7 p.m. on Friday, while the women look to do the same, taking on number one ranked Plattsburgh at 3 p.m. Saturday. Coverage begins a half hour before on WTOP 10. Good news for the Buffalo Bills as injured tight end Dawson Knox and right tackle Spencer Brown were listed as full participants in practice today after being limited the day before. Two returns that should please coach Sean McDermott after an upset loss to Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Defensive tackle Justin Zimmer's season is done with a knee injury. Cornerback Cam Lewis has been elevated from the practice squad to replace him. The Phils travel tr to face the Jets Sunday afternoon. New York Knicks coach Tom Tabito told the media today that he's not ready to make any changes to his core. After dismissing the idea the team needs to develop chemistry following a 114-110 loss to the depleted defending champion Milwaukee Bucks, the rant, topped with an expletive, preaches the time to play better is now. Tabuto now acknowledged his second unit has been together longer and will start to mix and match as the team gets more reps. Now we go to the Staples Center. Miami Heat taking on the LA Lakers. All tied up fourth quarter. Driving to the basket is Russell Westbrook, who will tie it up, but the Heat would go on a run to grab the lead. Put up Anthony Davis with the slam, and they'd rally it back to tie it up. 33 seconds in regulation. Russbrook guarded by PJ Tucker. Spins away to hit the fadeaway. 110 to 112, Lakers lead. Next possession, Lowry inbound to Harrow, and shooting from downtown, misses it, but the rebound is put home by Malik Monk, and we are going to overtime. Now in overtime, he, uh, Lowry in, Bradley with the tip, and shooting it from downtown to take the lead are the Lakers 115, now it's 117. The shot being taken by Westbrook on going back the other way on the fast break. And the Lakers would go on to, lead, to win the game, make the final 120 to 117. All right, 
Pat Machado, thank you so much. You ready for the game this weekend? Oh, it's going to be a massive weekend. I cannot wait for it. All right. I know I'm excited. Are you? I am very excited. I'm going to be there. All right, Brittany, can we get one last check of the weather before we head out? Yes, yeah, so it's going to be very rainy this weekend. So if you do have plans, I would suggest bringing an umbrella and a rain jacket as there's going to be brief the heavy downpours at some points. And on Monday, we are expecting some snow. And I know I'm very excited about that, but I don't know about you guys, but it's about time we're going to see some snow. See, I'm glad I have a garage in my home this year. That <laughs> way I don't have to break out the scraper this early in the year. Oh gosh, no, I'm ready. I'm ready to break out that scraper, break out that shovel. Mm -hmm. Me too. I'm, I'm not ready. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm with Hannah on this one. There you go. All right, and so we do have those two hockey games coming up this weekend. Anything else we should be looking forward to? Hockey night in Oswego. It starts a half hour before 6.30 start um, on WTOP 10 tomorrow on Friday. Make sure you're there on time. You're not going to want to miss this pregame. And then Saturday against number one ranked Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh has always been a team that has given the Lakers trouble, given that they are the best in the nation. And Oswego is beginning to level that up, so it should be interesting to see if they can continue that moving forward. All right, well, we can't wait. And that's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for OX5. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night, everyone. dozen significant tropical and winter storms that threaten the East Coast. So chances are there will be more hurricanes and blizzards near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today.